Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the studio. Um, thanks for joining us. I have a fun program uh, planned today, I think. So um, just settle in and enjoy. If you want to paint along, that's great, too. Um, before I get started, I always love to share kind of what, what, what I'm thinking about, what I'm, what I'm doing in the studio, and, you know, I do a lot of reading about art, and I, this is one of my favorite books, Art and Fear. This is by David Bayless and Ted Orland, and it's got some wonderful stuff in it. It's kind of a quick read, so if you, um, if you get it, you can sit down and read it, but I, it's something I always gravitate back to. So uh, I had something picked out to read from this this morning or this this afternoon I guess it is now and then um, I, I need to talk about our watercolor workshop sale uh, watercolor sketching one and two is uh, on sale right now just until the end of the weekend until Sunday so I'll talk a little bit about that and show some of my sketchbooks and then we'll get right into the watercolor oh and I do have a little bit of a reveal for you today too. It's pretty fun. But I'm just going to go ahead and read this. This is on talent, which is something I think that we all kind of get a little, little stuck on. Talent in common parlance is what comes easily. So sooner or later, inevitably, you reach a point where the work doesn't come easily. And aha, it's just as you feared. Wrong. By definition, whatever you have is exactly what you need to produce your best work. There's probably no clearer waste of psychic energy than worrying about how much talent you have, and probably no worry more common. This is true even among artists of considerable accomplishment. Talent, if it is anything, is a gift, and nothing of the artist's own making. This idea is hardly new. Plato maintains that all art is a gift from the gods, channeled through artists who are out of their mind, quite literally, in Plato's view, when making art. Plato, however, is not the only philosopher on the block. While his description correlates well with the functioning of the oracle of Delphi, Delphi, idiot savants, and certain TV evangelists, it's difficult to reconcile with most real-world events. Were talent a prerequisite, then the better the artwork, the easier it would have been to make. But alas, the fates are so rarely generous. For every artist who has developed a mature vision with grace and speed, countless others have laboriously nurtured their art through fertile periods and dry spells, through false starts and breakaway bursts, through successive and significant changes in direction, medium, subject matter. Talent may may get someone off the starting blocks faster, but without a sense of direction or a goal to strive for, it won't count for much. The world is filled with people who were given great natural gifts, sometimes conspicuously flashy gifts, yet never produce anything. And when that happens, the world soon ceases to care whether they were, they were talented. Even at, best, even at best, talent remains a constant, and those who re Plot, rely upon that gift alone without developing further, peak quickly and soon fade to obscurity. Examples of genius only accentuate that truth. Newspapers love to print stories about five-year-old musical prodigies giving solo recitals, but you rarely read about one going on to become a Mozart. The point here is that whatever his initial gift, Mozart was also an artist who learned to work on his work and thereby improved. In that respect, he shares common ground with the rest of us. Artists get better by sharpening their skills or by acquiring new ones. They get better by learning to work and by learning from their work. They commit themselves to the work with their heart and act upon that commitment. So when you ask, then why doesn't it come more easily for me? The answer is probably because making art is hard. When you end up caring about what you do, not whether the doing came hard or easy, talent is a snare and a delusion. In the end, the practical question about talent comes down to these, who cares and who would know? And what, the different, and what difference would it make? And the practical answers are nobody, nobody, and none. I like that a lot because <laughs> you do have to 
work no matter how talented. And I believe that truly. I think talent is like a teeny, teeny little bit. All right. So with that being said, let's get on today's uh, stuff. I'm pretty excited about it. So really uh, quick, Marla, um, just mm -hmm. to let people know on the chat, uh, any questions about purchasing workshops as gifts should go to support. Yes, yes. And we are working on that um, right now. So you will be able to do that shortly. I'm not sure where we're at, at it, uh, with it, but um, that is coming for sure. So you'll be able to buy workshops as gifts. Um, and um, yeah, and so there's right now the watercolor workshop is on sale. It's, um, let's see, I'm thinking it's $42 off each workshop. So that's an incredible price. I think it's $55 for each workshop. And the sale ends Sunday night at midnight Pacific uh, daylight or standard time, and that's watercolor sketching one and two. So that's really an incredible price. Um, let me show you some of the stuff that we did in it. Um, we'll go right here. Yeah, so just uh, it's watercolor sketching. So don't be intimidated if you're not a watercolorist. It's 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 about just getting in there and painting. And um, some we designed some of the pages. We did some different stuff. This was when the pandemic started. This is kind of when we got it got it going. And we did all kinds of fun things in it. So it's just about plopping down, honing your drawing skills. All right. Oh, great. Thank you. Yep, this. So it's really, really fun workshop. And in terms of uh, if you're if you're not a watercolorist, no worries. It's going to help you, <laughs> whether you're a pastelist, an oil painter, an acrylic painter. This workshop um, is just all about getting in there, having fun, enjoying that just the simple joy of sitting down, sketching quietly. I love watercolor for it because it's this <laughs> watercolor is so perfect for sketch for sketchbooks so permanent and so great and the the these books that i'm using here this is uh pentallic aquarell and you can get them now um for a while they were a little difficult to get because we kind of <laughs> honed the market on it on them so did lots of different stuff and we make color charts and there's a mixing video in there So we're working on another work, workshop. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> we're working on another watercolor workshop right now. I'm not sure exactly when we'll be done with it, but it's going to be coming out um, definitely this summer. All right, so that's a little sneak peek of the workshop. And again, um, I'm using... For the, this workshop, we're using these pentallics, it's aqua pentallics. These are the ones that I'm showing you today are, are seven by 10 inches. And I like that size. It's kind of a, um, you can still take it, you can still fit it in your purse or your backpack and take it out plein air painting. And so it's, but it kind of gives you enough real estate to, to do some fun stuff with. So I really like that. All right, so I wanna get into today's lesson. And um, I did a little preparatory work for it uh, because I, it, it's, you know, the drawing, it, it's not so easy. It's kind of a little bit of a complicated scene. So um, before I start, I'll, sh I'll show you how I kind of thought about it and how I kind of organized um, the, the composition. But I wanted to, to think about, all right, Yesterday I did a, a super stream, I call it a super duper stream for my monthly pastel painting lessons people. And we talked a lot about a lot of, well, a lot of different things about how to start and how to finish. But one of the things that was, you know, I think is really important when you're, when whatever it is that you're painting, whatever media, kind of being very, not kind of, being very clear about why you're painting a thing and just having an intention 
that intention that might that might shift and change as you're working but I think going going into a painting or a, even a sketch you can you want to know what is it what is it that attracted you what is is it that enchanted you, amazed you, made you stop, was arresting, made you even take the photograph in the first place? So let me think about this one. So it's really a, it's, it's really a good question to ask yourself because when we're painting in a realistic manner, um, or even impressionist or expressionist, you're still like, you know, why this thing that I'm painting? Because if you're not clear about that when you're in the middle of it, you can kind of lose focus, get bored of it, like, oh, why the heck am I doing this? And that, that leads to a, kind of a cascade of things that usually aren't very good. So I'm looking at this guy, and I think it's basically, to me, it, it, makes, me, it makes me happy to look at it. It makes me feel kind of comforted. It's nostalgic and familiar. Uh, it's, a, it's a neighborhood street that feels um, not only very beautiful, but kind of familiar. And I'm, I feel that it's this beautiful, sunny spring morning. You can almost smell the blossoms and feel a little breeze. Maybe it's not super hot, but it's, you're feeling that first warm warmth of spring. Um, I feel that in this. I feel like maybe maybe you're up and you're going for a little stroll with your coffee, or maybe you're walking your dog. That's it's a, it's what it feels like to me. Beautiful cast shadows, the blossoms of the trees, and I think that the little vehicle in here does make it. It's it's pretty. It's cute. It's nostalgic. Even the Volvo and the little hint of this little blue car in here. So that's kind of how I feel about the, the, the scene. And I want to do, hopefully I'm going to do more than just, you know, paint it accurately, that I'm going to get a little bit of that feeling into the sketch. Okay, so now, all right, it's got perspective in it. <laughs> Definitely does. And so I started out last night, it's like, okay, I'm going to start drawing it. And as I was doing it, I realized it's not quite, quite, quite right. And I'm going to use that word right because it, I don't, um, you know, I don't know about that, that word when we're talking about making art. But I wanted the, the drawing to be accurate and the scale, particularly of the vehicles, to be um, basically correct. Okay. So then, what did I do next? Like, this wasn't quite working. So the next thing I did was I, I went ahead and I printed out a couple of, um, a couple of these uh, prints of the, of the photographs of the piece. And I went ahead and I took a Sharpie. And the, main, the first thing is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cite this where, where this path ends basically the horizon. And then I took this Sharpie and I just, you know, I, I, I went over these main lines. Now, um, so I could see where everything was. Then, once I had that, and that was good, cause, because I, I feel like the, the, this van is way smaller than I would have thought. Um, what else was surprising to me? Um, this was, if I would have had to guess, I, I think this area, this spot is about where I, where I thought. So I, I wasn't too off on that. But if you look at my, this sketch, I had it, I think, a little high. So I, I think it, it did end up coming down about like so. So it's this and this. The, the, this division of space is really probably the, the, the key to the whole ball of wax, really. So now, once I did this, I took a piece of tracing paper 
And oh, actually, I that's not exactly true. I I reduced this. I I copied this and I reduced it a little. So this this version is reduced a little bit. But you see, then I just outlined um, the the main shapes and I also bisected this. This was important because then I'm judging the, where the shapes are based on this um, division of space and right down the center. So I can see that this car is right the center, the, the middle of this grouping of trees is right down the center. And so now I have a really good idea of where the shapes are placed in the piece, the major shapes. So that was super helpful. Okay, now, what's so funny about this is I was just watching a video by uh, that James Gurney was doing, and he was doing the exact same thing is he took a Sharpie and he was looking at a scene and dividing the space. So is that cheating? No, we're not cheating. <laughs> we're planning and we're getting some accuracy and um, maybe, maybe even precision in the drawing. Now, maybe you don't want that and that's okay too. But in this case, I kind of do. All right, so then next thing I have to do is I have to get my uh, scene that I'm going to do in the sketchbook, I have to get this the same uh, the same proportion as my photograph. Otherwise, all this work that I have done is really for naught. So um, I, I think I've got this and this, and I've got the placement of my path here. And now, one of the things that I, I don't like to do is I don't like to bring things right to the corner, but in this case, this, this the, the edge of the grass does go right to the corner. I might decide to bring this down a little bit so that my scene doesn't do that, but right now, that's where it hits, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Now, I've got my same division, so I know that this is... This is going to be right where the, the, the car is sitting, right? I know that. Um, the, my trees, all the shapes. So hopefully, I'll be able to pretty quickly and pretty accurately do a little pencil sketch, and then I'm bust out my watercolors and get going on that. All right, so let's go ahead and get, get this in here. So I know that my Volvo, the top of it, I have a little... It's sitting right here. I'm going to go ahead and get some of these shapes in. Oh, this comes down here. So I have a lot of good information now. So I'm basically right now I'm I'm sketching the sharpie lines where the sharpie lines are. Now that's you know that's it's pretty crude, but um, it's okay. I'll be able to get a little bit more nuance as I um, as I go here. Here's a quick question. Yeah. Um, how is this different from making a, rectang a rectangular grid? You could do it that way. Yeah, you could, you could do it that way. Any, you know, I, I'm just, uh, just a big advocate of anything that helps you. There really isn't cheating. Okay, then my, my, my van is basically sitting right here. So now I want, I want this other photo. It's sitting right here. There's the, and here's the window of it. And it, it's not very big at all. Something about like that. There it is. There's the little van. And then the blue car is really close to it.
but lower. Now here is that center. So I'll get these guys in and get a little little gesture on, on here. And I'll go ahead and get this mass in because that is also kind of helpful. And then I'm, I'm, I'm right now I'm basically following my Sharpie lines. And the baseline of the trees, all of that, it, it is really important. This is the shadow shape. This is the baseline of the more distant. And then, and then it, it's kind of fun because what happens is the more you get in there, the more everything just kind of falls into place. And Marla, where did you uh, mm. where did you pick up your proportional dividers? Just online. The proportional dividers. Yeah, those um, you know the little caliper type things. Yeah, I just bought the the calipers. I bought on online. Yeah. These days, almost everything I get supply wise is online. But I use the uh, proportion wheel for getting the um, right proportion on this. Okay, now we're almost there. Almost there. This is the shape. Oh, and there's a little bush right here. And then this, and then that goes like that. All right. I just want to give a little, just a quick run through of what a proportional wheel is and what a proportional divider is. Sure. We can do that. And those are pretty essential tools to have in the studio, I would say. Let me just finish this and then I'll get those out. I think I have that a little low. Okay. There's my this is a little little sidewalk break in the sidewalk. Here too. A little pathway. Nice. This kind of comes together really nice. All right. The wheels. Now, the thing, you know, cars, these kinds of things can be really intimidating to draw, but they're just shapes. They're just, and cars are just little rectangles, really. Okay. Proportion wheel. This is a proportion proportional scale, proportion wheel. So what you can do with this, it's pretty easy, is if your um, original proportion, say, is five by seven, so you come over here and you go five by seven, five by seven. It's, so five by seven is the same as, um, so if, say you want to do it larger, 12 by eight and a half. That those are the same proportion. So anything you go along this. Um, so this is a really, really great tool. Tool you can. I'm sure that you can go online and find something that's going to do the same thing for you. But um, you know, this is a little bit old school, so I kind of like it. Um, I'm going to get just a couple more things in here. This is this little, and then there's a shape that's doing that. And then, oh, I want to get that in there too. It's really...
All right. Good. OK, so um, proportional divider. It's, um, let me make sure I don't dump all my stuff here. Is this guy? So this this is something that you can flat. yeah no, that you can measure things with. So whatever's happening here is you know here is happening this here, depending on how you bring this up and can down. Move it over so, so you're kind of just kind of pivot there. Oh, yeah, you're there cutting it, it off a little bit. There it is. Yep. Yep. There you go. Yep. And I, you can buy less expensive ones that come, they can buy plastic ones, but um, to me, I bought a plastic one and it very, very promptly um, broke. So then I went ahead and popped for a little bit more. Okay. Just don't drop that one. On your yeah, foot. you don't drop it on your foot. <laughs> That's gonna be really not, not fun. Okay, great. So we got a nice sketch here. I feel really good about the sketch. I feel like it's it's accurate. And from here, once you have that accurate sketch, then you get to play. You know, right? Once you have this down um, and all kind of falls together in in a lot different way, then you can get more expressive and and um, get you know some di different kinds of line and different different textures and whatnot. But um, you know. To start, it feels good to start out with something that feels, you know, pretty pretty accurate. Okay, now, now I have a little bit of a surprise. Well, it was it was fun for me. So I have been using the this half pan from Windsor Newton, and it's get, getting getting so I'm missing some colors, and I'm also getting ready to work on. I'm working on the new watercolor workshop, so I decided it was time to make a a little bit more of investment for the summer for um, watercolors. So I bought this. Now, obviously, this is not um, this is an investment, uh, and I'm 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 happy I made it. It's uh, centerly forty eight. This is two hundred and fifty two dollars. So not not a cheap thing. Came with this cool little um, brochure. I love this. And I'm going to open it up. So I'm going to use this for the first time today. And it has this really awesome chart. I love the chart. And um, after I do the sketch today for you guys, I'm going to make a chart of all the colors. And here they are. So beautiful. There they are. I'm so excited about all the yellows and the reds. I'm just excited about all of the colors, really. And so I'm going to set it over here today to, to work on. Is that right, Kevin? Is that what you want? Yeah, it's, uh, this is uh, the okay. second camera. Let's just figure Let's it out. See. I'm going to get it up a little bit. All right. That's pretty good. So, ooh, it's so, I don't know. It's It's... Kind of like, do I really want to use it? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put the chart here, so maybe I can talk about some of the colors that I'm going to use and what they're like. All right, so I'm going to break it in right here and now. And that's really fun. Let's go ahead and give it a little spray. I've got two nice jars of, of clean water. If I can be... Um, diligent about it one will be for adding uh, water to the to mixes and one will be for adding uh, for cleaning the brushes this set also came with this little brush um, it's a number three um, which is really nice also but it came with a brush all right so on this guy today, I am actually going to start in, let me put my hair up just in case I get in the way. What's up, guys? <laughs> oh, nothing. Something We're from just, the... From doing the... some technical stuff in the background here. Oh, there is? Okay, sorry. Oh, my phone's ringing. Um, okay. All right. 
Um, as I'm working on this, uh, interesting, I think on this guy, I am gonna start with some of those darks in the tree branches, and I'm gonna get those in first, and then put some washes in for the foliage masses, I think, the, 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 the um, pink blossoms and the nice light yellow blossoms. So I think I'll go ahead and, ooh, what do I want? There's black, there's Payne's gray. Uh, so much stuff to play with. This is a neutral tint. There's warm sepia. Oh, too much fun. I'm gonna get some, ooh, look at that. Wowee, great color. Where's, where's the purple? Blue, ultramarine blue, oh, dioxide purple right there. Wow, it's got so much pigmenting strength. This is, this is, th these are very nice colors. Very nice um, paint. All right, let's get in there. When the, when the pigment is strong like this, it, it's much easier to get um, things that you want going. And so I'm just gonna play with the, the branches here. Little, little bit of a broken line. And so I, it's interesting, so in, in terms of kind of an order of operations um, as you're painting, I, um, I, I'm, I probably wouldn't do it quite this way in pastel. You know, I'm gonna come along with the blue spruce and and get in my sketch. I may come in with, I, w I might come in with something like this with blue spruce to say where my major shapes are, but I'm not gonna do it quite this way. So it's really great to have this chart and it tells you what the colors are because with watercolor, it is a little difficult to see what the colors are in the pans. Oh, I want that. I'm going to lift that out because I, I want that little negative shape right there. And then come along and get this darker tree over here. And so now that I have this kind of accurate drawing, I can be much more uh, playful and, and gestural with the, the with the line. Wow, this paint is nice. Um, David mentions, he says, it's interesting about the order of operations. If you watch many watercolor instructions on YouTube, they all start with broad washes and graded washes of color as their first step. So you're, do you're taking a slightly different approach. So um, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm getting the, the, this, um, these darks in because I, I want to preserve the negative shapes that are um, going to happen around them. Um, and you know, I'm not a watercolor purist. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sketching here. 
So, um, you know, that's not my, my, my focus is not to have a, my, my focus is more about the sketch and the, and the drawing and um, that than, than necessarily doing a traditional watercolor. Yeah, I think that's so, an important distinction about mm -hmm. that you're doing watercolor sketching here. Yeah, yeah, I am. You might approach a finished watercolor piece a lot differently. Yeah, yeah, probably would. And um, which brush are you using? This is a Utrecht Sabolette, a number 12. And this is probably my, you know, the thing that I, my workhorse for, for this kind of thing. I am going to put some washes in next, but I wanted to get these darks of the trees in first. So here we go with some br more broad washes. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Clean that up so that everything stays nice and fresh and bright. Ooh, so, ooh, what color should we use? I think that that rose opera, let's see, that one, that one, let's see what this one looks like. This is exciting, oh my gosh, that is exciting. <laughs> I love that color. Wowee. All right, so, I'm, you can do it two ways. Well, there's several, many ways, I'm sure. But I'm going to go ahead and wet the section that I'm gonna, intending. And it's going to pull up a little bit of the color from... So it's definitely going to mix in there, but that's all right. It doesn't need to be absolutely pure. Oh, my gosh. And so I'm being a little playful with the color because obviously I, I could have picked something that was a little bit more accurate to the to the photo, but <laughs> I just wanted that. I wanted that pink. Okay, let's go get shifted a little bit. Maybe a little more orange. My um, usual orientation towards doing these, the sketching is that, um, you know, I just want, I want to be able to um, draw and paint every day. And um, this, this is a way that I can stay in that all the time. And I can take these anywhere, the watercolors with me anywhere. All right, let's put this in here. I love that pink. Oh my gosh. That is so amazing. All right, so now I'm going to get something in for the, the light green foliage. And obviously this... This one is a something to head to head towards. Okay. Wow. And Here's, I'm, I'm gonna skip around in between. 
And then, then I'll add a little more yellow as I go up in here to these guys. And then and I'm thinking, wow, the color is so intense. I'm impressed. I'm really impressed by the color. Uh, Marla, can you talk a little bit about waiting for a color to dry or not um, painting near it? Yeah, you get, you know, the thing with watercolor is that if, it, depending on what you want to have happen with the edges, you know, it's, and, and I actually think it, it's kind of a, it's kind of good because what it does is it forces you to sort of jump around and not get, you know, not stick in one spot of the painting. Um, which is, you know, kind of a, 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 a good, um, unint maybe unintended um, consequence of that. Um, yeah, so you, you, if you, depending on what, what kind of edge you want, you have to wait for one place to dry. You can come back over. Look at when I came back, when I went across these branches. Um, there, you know, it, it picked up some some of the color. If I had l l waited a, a tiny bit longer, um, it it might have not picked up quite as much, but still going to pick up some. And sometimes you want, like right there, I want that, I want it, like right here, I want that to, to bleed just a little bit in here. And now I'm going to get this light wash. Now here's a, here's a, instance where I'm going to come along this whole area and get a light wash and then I'll let this dry and then I'll come back in and get the negative shapes and some darks and that's kind of cool. Ooh, look at those colors. Boy, boy, oh boy. So beautiful. So I'm happy with my investment so far. That's good. It's really nice. All right. All right I'm just going to get a little color in, in the vehicle, the window. And, ooh, that color is going to work really nice for this guy. Okay, that's cool. I'm saving the, the bus. Let's see, I want to see where my purple is. It's right here. This little chart is great, too. 
really see. Try not to block too much there, Molly. The board student lean. Uh -huh, I know. And if, I, I'm having to lean out of the way so that you guys can see. It's tricky to film top down like yeah. this. Yeah. It's... So, a little cast shadow. Now, one way of thinking about this is I could, I could, I could in fact come along my, my pathway here and give it a little, a little color, like so. Set that wash down before I do the cast shadows. Here's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever use test a test piece? Or water of watercolor paper to check your colors. Yeah, yeah, definitely, sure. And I could do it here, just like I do in the in a pastel. I could do a little section. Um, uh, yeah, sometimes I do. Let's see, I'm going to get some little bit of kind of a gray in here. And a little bit of a inside the window of the van. getting some of these little shapes in. Um, there's some idea in here that this is kind of grayed. You definitely need that some neutrals. There's so much of this pop of color that the neutrals were gonna gonna help describe that the, the the more colorful spots. So this is a couple little washes in here. Get a couple little little darker areas going. And then back here, whoops, I want a little more green. And then at the end of this pathway, there's a nice dark and then a light. So we want to try to get that. There's all kinds of fun things to, to try to describe here. Okay, now I want to get, I'm gonna go ahead and play with the cast shadows a little bit, including on the, on the Volvo. There's, on the hood here, there's this kind of neat pattern of 
I want to get the right and then it comes along the side. This is all in shadow. Ooh, that's all in shadow. So I'll just get a wash to remind me that I want that all in shadow. And there's the wheel well. And then it's dark, darker inside. Oh, there is a question here mm -hmm. about um, our filming uh, technique here. And mm -hmm. someone says, why not use a mirror so Marla can sit more naturally? And uh, it's tricky. Just filming art is tricky because when you yeah. position things a certain way, you start to distort it. And it's uh, if you watch a lot of different videos on YouTube, everyone has a slightly different approach. Yeah. We're, we're still kind of ironing that out ourselves. Yeah. To figure it out. But as long as Marla cooperates, this works perfectly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to listen. I have to, I have to be good. Um, you know, some of these things, too, equipment is not, um, um, it's not um, inexpensive. Yeah, I watch a lot of other. We watch a lot of other people and how how they mm -hmm. how they do it, and um, we've we've learned some stuff, and a lot of stuff we've just learned on our own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What works for us. You know, we have. There's a lot of considerations when when it comes to the filming, and um, considerations about the studio space and the um, using the studio in uh, various ways not not just for filming so um though we've kind of resolved some of that lately um so yeah one never knows we might okay so i'm going to get a color mixed for the front of the bus this is the shadow part would you say that you're working at it's about six by eight or how, how how big is that image that you're working on right now so the the sketchbook itself is um, oops the sketchbook itself is uh, seven by ten so it's a little bit smaller than that How do you avoid, uh, this is a question about the painting, this painting itself. Mm -hmm. How do you avoid getting lost in such a busy photo? So um, that work that I did, the preliminary work, is how I'm not getting lost. Because I'm, I'm really, I'm, I, have, I have a lot of, you know, that gave, gave me a lot of clarity about what I was doing and how I wanted to do it. If I had not done that, I would definitely be lost. And that's, to me, just just a case for that preliminary work, that don't skip the preparation. You know, I, th I think there's, when we're artists, there's a lot of, and I know, I, I'm so guilty of this, oh, I should be able to do that. I think I can do that. But then when I get into it, I realize, oh, man, I would make that, that bus way too large or the house too big or the person too big or what whatever whatever it is whatever element that i i um you know i i tend to overestimate <laughs> my skill um and so i have come to understand that i that i need to i need to do that prep It makes it more fun, you know. You you think, oh well, you just want to get into the, got want to get into the drawing, want to get into the, you know, doing the thing. But I gotta say that it, you know, just having the confidence and knowing knowing where I'm I'm not gonna get lost, um, makes this so much more enjoyable. Right now, I'm I'm really having fun doing it. It's really 
great. And I'm not lost, because I'm, you know, which is kind of amazing, really, because look at it. It's like, wow, there's a lot going on. And that's just by, you know, just, just careful planning. Here's this. And can you talk a little bit about connecting shadows? Connecting shadows, how... Um, Presumably, maybe like the figure ground relationship, like how the shadow relates to the whatever is casting the shadow. Yeah, well, so they're cast shadows, they're form shadows. Um, so um, the shadows, I want to, I want to say, you know, the the beauty of the shadow, and I haven't gotten to them yet. Um, I think they're really beautiful. I want to say something about that, about how pretty they are. Um, I want to connect um, some together, definitely just to simplify. I'm definitely, you know, wanting, wanting that. Um, and thinking about the color of the shadows um, on a sunny day, you know, th there's a mix of warm and cool going on because there's the warmth of the sun and the and the reflected light from the sky now this one this particular sketch is kind of a exa good example like do I want to put any pen line on here typically I do because I'm, I'm thinking of uh, being a sketch more than it's a, a, a watercolor painting per se but um this might be one that I that I don't do that we'll, we'll see Let's see how that pans out I'm going to keep that a little simpler. And if you can, can you mention the colors that you're using? Oh, I can't. can't. Because um, they are new to me. And I'm just, yeah. That's how you approach pastels too. You, yeah, I don't. You yeah, because you know, cause, know, the you know the, one you of know. the things. One of the things about um, uh, so basically, for if for me to call out the colors while I'm painting, it, it'd be like um, doing the mixing while I'm painting. Um, and mixing color, there's like a different. You know, it's like using a different part of your brain. Than, than actually just painting. So um, I, I think a little bit like if I were to stop and like, okay, that's, that's blue, that's, you know, it's all, um, that's the dioxazine purple, um, that is gonna make it, um, gonna be shifting to the left brain and it's hard enough just painting, yep. Mm. And staying out of the way. Uh, gotta stay out of the way. And is it possible to fix something or change something in watercolor? Oh yeah, you can lift stuff out. Definitely, you can definitely change things in watercolor. Um, it's, you know, what the thing is, you want to do that in a timely way, um, but you can do it. It's not that hard. Lift things out. 
Um, some colors are going to um, be more stainy than others, and so they're going to leave a residue regardless. Um, so, you know, there is that. And uh, can you erase the pencil lines once the watercolor is dry? Not really. The pencil line's going to be on there. But I'm, again, you know, I'm sketching. I'm not, you know, necessarily a purist with the watercolor. So I actually think that that pencil line, that is adding, you know, character to my scene. I, I like it. I think it looks really cool. Um, um, so, but that's me. It's very personal. Get in here. I want this little dark shape here. This little cast shadow right there. It's kind of fun. And these cast shadows are, you know, the, the sidewalk's a little, um, got a little cant to it. And as we go back, the shadows get a little closer together. Look at that, and now So a few people are mentioning that they really like the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser for working on uh, watercolor, for fixing watercolor. I'm not too familiar with that one. I'm not either. I'll look it up. All right, so now I have waited to do the color on the bus because I know it's going to be fun. Um, so I'm going to get a couple more things in here before I do that. Hmm. I always like to save some fun things. There's one called Mr. Net as well. Mr. Net Sponge. So we're learning something. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, check it out. Oops, that's a little dark, darker than I want. Well, I love these colors. I just, um, I kind of, I just kind of do. It's really strong pigment.
Yeah, I think yeah, I'm that learning that's a cool. lot today. I guess Mr. Ned is Mr. Clean in French. Oh, really? I did not know that. <laughs> no. Just get a few more. I might want to add a little blue sky. I want, uh, oh, there's a couple more things I want to do. Um, get this a little darker right there. It's kind of cool. Um, I mean, there's, you know, you could go, you could keep going, keep going, but I don't know that I want to do that. I'm going to get a little blue sky in there now. Okay, now I'm going to look at my blues that I have here. I want that one. I had, there was one that I really liked, this one. That is... That's just thalo blue. I'm a I'm such a huge thalo blue fan. <laughs> I just love it. So I'm just gonna get a little hint of that blue sky. It's all kind of all you need. Not much more than that. It kind of says blue sky. Now the orange on the side of the bus. kind of kind of all it needs right there just two little strokes it's so fun um all right what else do i want to do i don't know you guys i think I, I i like it it's a nice nice little sketch um i could come in and do some other branch stuff But yeah, this kind of thing is, uh, it feels sort of like, oh, it's hard. Um, but, um, you know, I just went through all the, you know, just kind of a steps I you know, thought about the, the scale of it. Um, you know, I, I went through and I, I did this first to really like get the, get the drawing. Um, you could you could just as well have done square grids, but for me, um, you know, I'm I I, I want to do a little bit of drawing, and so I'm uh, just bisecting it like this is giving me an opportunity to like contrast and compare the shapes. Um, when I'm doing that that kind of thing, I'm really a lot looking at the negative shapes um, that are created. And, and that's helpful. I'm, I'm, I don't want to do too much more because I'm going to get it too, too muddy, I think. So let me just do a little bit of dark, a little darker here on the, this tree. So it pops out a little bit more. These tree shapes. Kind of would you finish the uh, back end of that Volvo a little bit or would that be too too much information there oh you could I mean it doesn't need much probably that you know it, it sort of reads you could tell what's going on
And I, uh, I'm trying to defer to the drawing to tell me what it needs rather than actually all the time looking at is the, did I did I get everything on the reference that you know was there that's not really does the drawing need it maybe yeah I could I could I could here here's the back of the wheel there's the there's the um, bumper yeah, but I don't even think it needs that kind of does that there's a little cast shadow underneath the bus happening there. And I like that. Now, yeah, whether I whether I go ahead and put any pen line, I don't think I'm going to on this. I think it stands on its own fine without it, without the pen line. But I, you know, this kind of thing to me is is a just a, a wonderful pathway that really unlocks the possibilities for larger works for pastel, oil, acrylics, doing this kind of thing, this kind of study, this kind of sketching. That's why, you know, for me, that the watercolor sketching workshop is such a, um, a great avenue in, and uh, that's uh, a large part of my intention of doing it. And also just, you know, reconnecting with the joy of drawing and painting and sitting down and, um, whether it's something that's more defined as a defined scene or whether you're just sketching things that are sitting around your house or your garden, what's in your kitchen, you know, all of that, um, you know, finding beauty in the, you know, just humble things around your house, finding beauty in the ordinary. And um, yeah, so that's the watercolor sketching is, so it's on sale a couple more days and then that's it. For a little while and um, so oh and the you know I don't need to remind the monthly people that you guys get a little bit extra off on that workshop on all the workshops so check it out go to um, paintinglessonswithmarla.com and um, yep I do have yep. one quick question mm -hmm. I don't want to bring up a sore subject mm -hmm. but um, your last year your um, workshop in Italy got canceled because of COVID do you plan on doing workshops in Italy again anytime Oh, it's not a sore subject. Um, it's just kind of a bummer that it got yeah, canceled. Yeah, I know. It's such a bummer. Probably um, not heading yes. back anytime soon. Well, of course, of course, Italy is one of those places, you know, I, I, and the people that I work with there, um, I love I love them. Deborah and Ivano and Zamperla, they're, they're the best. And uh, Ivano is native Italian. And so when we go there, literally when I go, get to Florence and I'm there with those guys it feels like my second home <laughs> and they take care of everything there's it they are so amazing they do such a beautiful job of making you feel like you're part of a family but also very organized and together workshop so that combination is like such a gem and yes I would love to go back and I as soon as that can happen safely I will probably do a, a workshop in, it, um, if they're willing, um, I will do another workshop in Florence. Um, live workshops on the whole, I'm going to be, you know, probably uh, connect with them in a, in a different way after COVID. So we'll see. I'm, I'm probably going to be a little more selective about it and really careful about it. So, um, but I do intend to do some live workshops. And the other thing that I um, think about is doing one here, doing to a small, a very small groups. Um, I may, and I used, used to do that once a year here. I used to do a plein air workshop um, in this area once a year. Um, and I, you know, hope, hope to be able to resume that at some point as well. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. Okay. All right, this was super fun to do. 
kind of complicated. Just, you know, just work it through. Just knit it together. Just little bit by little bit, and it doesn't, it's not so overwhelming. All right, guys, we'll be back next week with um, another uh, live stream. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing next week. Um, probably pastel, I would think, um, since the watercolor um, uh, sale is going to be over. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. Um, but I hope you have a really, really great Memorial weekend, and um, thanks for watching, and see you soon. All right, bye-bye.